Hi, in this video, we're looking at gas stoichiometry. Now this is a little bit different because we're gonna involve that molar volume quantity. And if you don't know what a molar volume is, it's maybe a good idea to go and watch my video on the ideal gas law, because that explains what a molar volume is. So let me kind of back up. We looked uh, previous units at this idea, this relationship between moles, mass, and particles. Um, that to go from a mass of a substance, which is the gram weight most often, you throw a certain substance on a balance and you get a mass for it, you can then convert to moles using the molar mass of that substance. Now again, what's a mole? A mole is just a clumping of a large quantity of particles, six, about six times 10 to the 23rd particles. To go to how many particles, you'd use that six times 10 to the 23rd number, which is called Avogadro's number, to go between moles and particles. And this is good for a chemist to be able to do because we can essentially use the mass of a substance as a way to count how many particles there are. And that's helpful because we can't see the particles because they're too small, and there are tons of them in a weighable sample. So this kind of relationship here between mass, moles, and particles is crucial to, uh, to chemistry and to a lot of other uh, branches of science. Now, we're talking just about one substance here, so let's say I wanted to relate two substances, maybe in a chemical reaction. I've got substance one with a setup here and substance two with an identical setup, but my only connection, if I wanted to go from the mass of one substance to the mass of another substance, I can't do that directly. My only connection between these two substances is through the moles. Um, and that part there is gonna be the molar ratio. If you remember, I get that from the coefficients in the balanced equation. Now, if all of this seems very foreign to you because you, we haven't covered stoichiometry yet, um, or you just need a little bit of a refresher, it's maybe a good idea to go and watch my what is stoichiometry video. Um, but back to this, um, I wanna add something to this chart. I have mass, moles, and particles for each substance, but now with our molar volume relationship, I can actually add volume to this too. As long as we're talking about at STP conditions, that means one mole of any substance is going to have a volume of 22.4 liters. And so it's this right here. But it's crucial that you see this. It's gotta be at standard temperature and pressure. If the temperature or the pressure is different, this number changes. And so that 22.4 liters per mole is not gonna work out if we're not at STP. So in this video, all of the problems we're gonna do are at STP, and I believe all the problems mention that, um, but if they don't, you can assume it for this video. So uh, let's take a look at an example problem. Uh, this gives us an equation. Uh, this is the combustion of methane and oxygen. It's producing carbon dioxide and water. And it says calculate the volume of oxygen gas. Volume of oxygen gas is what we're after. We want to figure out what this is. That reacts with 4 liters of methane. Now this is methane. Um, so we're putting in 4.0 liters and we want to calculate, well, what volume of oxygen should we have? That's the other reactant. So that makes perfect sense to want to figure out, figure out what that is. So let's start with 4.0 liters. And by the way, here's our little roadmap here. So we, let's say, are starting here and let's call this uh, CH4. Now what we want to do is get to the volume of the other substance, which in this case is going to be O2. And so here's our path. I want to use the molar volume, 22.4 liters per mole, to convert from liters to moles. Once I'm in moles, I want to use the molar ratio to convert to moles of the uh, other substance, in this case O2. And then from there, I just want to use the molar volume one more time to get into volume of O2. So here I go, 4.0 liters of CH4 times 22.4 liters of CH4 on the bottom, one mole of CH4 on the top. This is how it, I would employ the uh, molar volume conversion factor to convert from liters into moles. So now I want to multiply by the molar ratio, and then I want to finish by multiplying by that uh, molar uh, volume again. So let's look at the, the bottom part here. This is where I need the coefficients from the balance equation. On the bottom, I have one mole of CH4. On the top, I have two moles of O2. Okay. And then finally, I know I'm a little scrunched here because I put the CH4 there, but on the bottom, let me just cross this off for a second. Bottom, I want one mole of O2 
And I want to go to a volume. Now, again, we're, all this is happening at STP. So that means I'm down here. I can use that 22.4 liters again here to convert to liters of O2. Now, pause for a second. I want you to notice something. We've got 22.4 liters on the bottom of this fraction and on the top of this one. And that means you can choose to type those into your calculator and they'll just cancel each other out or you can do it before you type it in. We don't need to put in 22.4 liters on the top and the bottom because you're gonna divide them and that's gonna give you one. So essentially what we're doing is just four liters times two over one. Um, and that should give us eight. So 4.0 liters times two over one gives us 8.0 liters of O2. So that's our final answer there. I have two significant figures to match and that should do it. Um, long story short, if you're going from volume of substance one to substance two, volume to volume, uh, you can just look at the molar ratio. Here's a one to two ratio. That means for four liters, I'll need eight liters of O2. But let's say I wasn't going volume to volume. What if I went from mass to volume or volume to mass? Well, that's going to change things a little bit. So here's another uh, example problem. This says, same equation, determine the mass of water produced. Mass of water produced. When 8.3 liters of oxygen gas, so 8.3 liters of that goes in, and we want to figure out what mass of water is produced. Now, here's our map again. Um, and I'm actually going to get rid of this in a second once we kind of know what our, uh, our plan is. They're giving us a volume of, let's call this oxygen and this water. They're giving us a volume. I want to convert to moles. And then between moles and moles, I want to go to moles of water. So I'm going to use the molar ratio there from the equation. Once I'm into moles of water, I actually want to go this way. I want to convert... Uh, using the molar mass of water to mass. So that's the plan. Let's kind of back up and just uh, have this nice open space. Ah, I want to start with 8.3 liters of O2. On the bottom, I want liters of O2. And there's my molar volume. 22.4 liters of O2 is equal to a mole of O2 at STP. So now I've canceled out liters of O2 and I'm into moles. Uh, next step, molar ratio. So how many moles of O2? It's two moles of O2 on the bottom and two moles of H2O on the top. Now, actually, again here, you really don't have to type in to your calculator these twos because this is essentially one. Um, so that molar ratio is it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio, two-to-two -two technically, but Mathematically, it doesn't matter. So on the bottom here, this is my molar mass of water because I want to go to the mass of water. I don't want to go to a volume. Otherwise, I'd use that 22.4 again on the top. Uh, I want to go to the mass of water. So a mole of water on the bottom has what mass? Well, you may remember this by now. Uh, it's about 18, 18.02 18 grams of water on the top. And that cancels out our moles of water. Now we're just left to calculate. So I'm typing into my calculator 8.3. Uh, times 18.02 divided by 22.4. Now, why didn't I include the twos? Well, again, if you've got a two on the top and a two on the bottom, they end up canceling each other out. And I always recommend to my students, if you can find a way to calculate problems where you hit the fewest number of buttons, that decreases your chances of accidentally making a calculator mistake. And so I would uh, just recommend you kind of use your brain on that one and and just don't include the twos. Uh, this gives me, to two significant figures, 6.7 grams of water. Now you can imagine the, uh, the real life applications to this. Uh, one I use often in class is airbags. Uh, if we wanna know that an airbag needs to inflate to a very specific volume so it doesn't under or over inflate, uh, then we wanna be able to calculate how much of the reactants uh, that's a little chemical reaction in there. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, but how much of the reactant uh, in an airbag needs to be present in order to produce X amount of liters of air? Um, and so that's just one example. There are, there are many. Um, and in my class, we do a couple different labs involving gas stoichiometry. That's just a lot of fun. Um, so that's it. That's gas stoichiometry. It's all about using that 22.4 liters per mole. 
Uh, one crucial piece to this is that these reactions happen at STP. At different temperatures or pressures, that 22.4 liters per mole is gonna be a different number. I think at room temperature, that changes to like 24.5 or something. Um, but in our class and in many classes in, uh, in chemistry, you're going to be using 22.4 liters per mole. It's powerful to be able to solve stoichiometry problems, helping you to predict amounts of products or reactants. Good stuff, thank you.